morning. Derek Watson, the angry dentist here. Thursday, March the something, third or the fourth. I lose track of time. Well, I lose track of the date anyway, don't you? I lose track of the years sometimes. Oh yeah, I used to be one of those people that used to write down the, when we had the old cardboard notes, used to write down the, for some reason a date got stuck in your head, like, you know, 1992 or something and uh, three years later I'd uh, if I wasn't thinking I'd write down 1992 as the year so I got myself a watch with the date on it you know and if I uh, wanted to know the day and the month I used to look look at my watch like that and uh, I was I did that once and one patient said to me what what do you keep looking at your watch for you know are you running late you know haven't you got enough time to see us I said, no, I'm just checking the date for the notes, you know. And you forget that people are, I've got other problems, they get really wound up and uh, sometimes they're wound as tight as a spring when they come in and and uh, they sort of assume that you are as well. Anyway, what I wanted to do was uh, just uh, finish off on the capitation thing yesterday because whenever I do these things, I don't really... Um, pre-plan them you know I mean in other words I don't sort of have an idea of even of what I'm going to say more than about a day beforehand and uh, I certainly don't uh, uh, marshal my thoughts in advance it's, it is literally rambling as you can probably tell but uh, with the capitation thing yesterday I thought oh well, there was a few things that I could probably tell you if you are interested in capitation that um, would, might, might be useful um, and it was prompted by the uh, Simply Health, there was an article I think in one of the dental magazines about Simply Health taking over Denplan and I'd spoken about um, school bus. I'd spoken about uh, Wesleyan taking over practice plan. So basically it's, it's Simply Health versus uh, Wesleyan now. And it's a long way away from the roots, and I don't think that's necessarily a good thing, and I'll explain why. The DEM plan was the original capitation scheme, the Stephen Noor and Marion Orchardson scheme. And uh, it uh, was very much, uh, Stephen Noor was very much a sort of, you know, this is your plan, you have ownership of it, you, you're, you know, you're going to set the rates for this. You're going to, you weren't allowed to vary the number of bands, but you could set your own rates, etc. And the idea was that uh, you, uh, put your own practice logo on it and it, it was your dental plan so if you're the oak tree dental practice it was the oak tree dental plan but then it all sort of got, got a weirded up a bit by advertising because dentists uh, a lot of the dentists wanted into this scheme because they liked the idea of the money coming in but they didn't um, know how to market it in a way you know they didn't know how to discuss it with the patients or br bring it up whenever they brought it up with the patients the patient said oh yeah no I don't want I don't want to buy insurance thanks very much and um, and it wasn't insurance and they didn't really know how to explain it so there was a dem plan came under a lot of pressure to advertise and the thing that everybody wanted was uh, television advertising they say you know the, their member dentists who by then were growing quite fast were, were saying to them look you we want some TV adverts you know to get some new patients in and Stemplan was having problems in that the, the sort of the modal value of the number of patients was quite low. By which I mean that you had the occasional, you know, the sort of the Martin Fallowfield who had a thousand patients on Denplan. I think it was Martin. And then, and then but, but I mean like 90% of the dentists had, had four patients. And that was administratively very expensive for Denplan. They didn't, they couldn't really make any money off a dentist who needed all the admin doing and, and yet really had only had the income from four patients coming in so they tried a bit of TV advertising and of course it didn't work it was just because it, it was never going to work I mean the way that people join capitation is not by seeing a TV advert and suddenly thinking I know I'll, I'll join a third-party dental capitation plan that doesn't work like that all the recruitment and marketing is done by the dentists themselves in the surgery you have to understand the system and know how to talk about it to the patients. And so Denplan did this TV advertising really just to appease the members and then stopped because obviously it was just a complete waste of money and expensive as well. 
So what Demplan then did was um, they fell back on uh, their plan B, which was really just to advertise to the profession at Dental Showcase. Um, and by making a massive great splash all over the uh, Excel, the dentists sort of got the impression that Den Denplan was doing a massive amount of marketing and advertising on their behalf. And, um, and sort of the pressure for TV advertising sort of fell off. Now, Denplan and uh, uh, Quentin Skinner, uh, who, who used to work at Denplan, then went off and set up dental payment administration systems, which was was a sort of a, a spin-off. When I say a spin-off, it was like a, it didn't, uh, you know, it wasn't by consent a spin-off. He just said, you know, I'm going to, this is, there's a lot of money in this, I'm going to go off and set up my own version of this. Um, and um, the two of them diverged in a way in that Demplan dentists increasingly became, wanted to be mollycoddled, you know, they wanted to be, they didn't want to have to set up their own plan. They said, you know, what's the point of having four, three, four hundred different plans all branded differently when we could get together out under the Demplan brand and, uh, you know, and market better, you know, to, to TV advertising under for Demplan. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, whereas DPAS went the other way. They were like, um, you know, we this is still your your plan, and uh, and that's because uh, again, Demplan, you know, the biggest problem with these third-party capitation plans was that it was supervised neglect. And while there is no incentive for supervised neglect because the dentist sets the fees and uh, you know only gets into trouble if he does do supervised neglect. There are a few circumstances where the game theory is that the dentist can do well by supervised neglect and one easy example is a dentist who's about to retire. If you're about to retire then you know that you could argue that there is you are incentivized to do not much for the last two years before you sell the practice, providing you can be sure that the um, that the incoming dentist can't really do a sort of a clinical health check and find out that there's a ton of work to do on the on the patients that he's taking over. Um, and uh, the other uh, problem was when a patient changed between dentists. You know, they might go from dentist A to dentist B, and they might have different standards. You know, they might dentist B might say, look, you know, I'm sorry, you need a ton of work, whereas dentist A might genuinely or not. I thought that you didn't and so um, what happened was then that the patients were then saying well who's the who runs this bloody scheme you know who can I appeal to where's the where's the the arbitration in this and and Demplan had to set up some means of resolving disputes initiated by patients over whether they were dentally fit on transfer and so Demplan went down the route and, and they said look this is no good we can't have a bunch of dentists running their own scheme under the Demplan brand. If, it's, if we're going to have a Demplan brand, then it's going to mean something. So we're going to have to take control. We're going to have to centralise everything. Um, and so they went down the route of it being more of a corporate brand and they became increasingly protective of it, whereas DPAS and uh, still, it still uh, you know, became your own brand. And they were like, well, you know, it, the patient's got a problem, then obviously they need to contact you about that because it's your scheme. I like the, I like the sort of the second approach. I must say, um, if you are going to implement it into your own practice, then I personally I mention it to everybody, and that's because of what I was saying yesterday about one third of the patients being assurance-minded, and you don't know which third they are. You honestly don't, so you have to just say to everybody, you know, um, it's difficult. I mean. Talking, talking about private dentistry and capitation to patients is difficult because patients differ and when you've been doing it for a long while um, you tend to um, differ in your approach and so if I was to say to you like you know what you've got to say to your patients is I recommend that you join our dental plan um, you know that comes across as so cheesy it's the sort of thing that on a dental plan training course they used to say to the dentist they used to say, in fact, they used to say worse than that. They used to say, you know, you need to send out a letter to your patient saying that from the 1st of March, 
we're going on fully onto a dental plan and you know if you don't want to join then fine we'll find another dentist for you and that was a disaster and they, so they stopped doing that but um, but you know what how do you introduce something like that to a patient do you say oh we're doing like we're doing a dental plan now you know I think you might be interested in it because that is that is a classic you know uh, <laughs> we've got a new product here you know ultra filtered petrol for your lawnmower uh, it costs four times as much do you think you know can I sell you some so it varies from patient to patient so but I do firmly think that you should mention it at least once to every single patient because they deserve to know what their options are and uh, third-party capitation is an option having said that I don't prepare any notes I have jotted a few things down so yeah, not that I'm looking at it while I'm driving or anything um, some of the patients it's most suitable for are those with gum problems and the reason for that is that uh, gum problems benefit from a regular sort of exposure to the dentist and the hygienist etc. If someone's got a lot of decay then it tends to be a, almost a one-off. I, I can't think of any patient I've got, certainly not who stayed with the practice, who has had persistent problems with decay. Um, they are people who've got a, a, a tube of polos in the glove box and when they come in it's a disaster because you know that almost every one of their teeth is has got a problem so they need you know like 10 12 fillings and they're all DOs and MOs and decay under crowns decay under bridges I've had a, a woman in the other day who had a bridge believe it or not from the upper right two to the upper left seven and it was on about uh, five teeth and four of them have rotted away and so this whole thing is, is going up and down now on the seven which is the only tooth that hasn't separated from the bridge from decay so um, but by far and away the majority of patients that we treat now and the problems we treat them for are gum problems and so that means a lot of visits a lot of nagging about their tooth brushing a lot of disclosing a lot of um, a lot of uh, showing them how to brush and how to use interspace brushes and stuff like that. And part of the plan is that we get them in every four months. And that's because we tend to find that after four months they haven't forgotten what we told them last time. Well, six months they tend to have forgotten what we told them last time, gone back to their old brushing habits. But again, that four monthly um, recall, although it is genuine it's, we're, not, we're not just saying you know we're going to get you in three times to make you think you're getting value for money I genuinely believe for anyone who's got any any sort of uh, gum problem four monthly recall is for you know not not for a scan and polish but really just for to touch base and have a chat about how they're doing with their oral hygiene is is good um, the the way that I sort of approach it is I say look you know you've got gum problems and we've got a there's there's two ways I'll tell you how I just explain it I say look especially to new patients we've got two systems here we've got a system called the shut the stable door after the horse is bolted system where you can come in every six months and if anything's gone wrong we'll try and fix it yeah or we've got a monthly preventive scheme where you come in every four months and we try and keep you healthy that is it and, and it's a bit humorous but it basically encapsulates the difference between the two plans you know you're going to underwrite your own treatment and come in as and when you feel like it and uh, just leave me to deal with the consequences or do you want me to take over responsibility and uh, try and see if I can get this mess sorted out on a long-term basis and that's uh, straight away the patient will say no well, some of them say, well, actually, I've only been coming in once a year. Do you really think I need to come in once every six months, you know? Uh, and others will say, you know, yeah, I've been thinking about joining the dental plan. And then they do think about it. The other thing is, uh, can anyone join? And the answer to that is emphatically yes. Anyone can join, by which I mean anyone, you don't have to say to anyone at all, no, you would you cannot ever join this plan. Any, everyone, to put it slightly differently, can aspire to join a preventive dental plan. Now, 
like with every rule there's a few exceptions so if someone's got a ton of implants or something or um, mostly implants or they're completely unstable to the point where their disease is out of control their gum disease is out they're not brushing their teeth they're not turning up for appointments they're not uh, taking any advice on diet etc etc then no instability is a big reason for not not being able to join the plan however a lot of dentists make the mistake of assuming that patients can't join just because they need work doing and that is not correct you can um, you know someone can come in they can need two root treatments to a couple of extractions and you can say to them look I, I suggest you join up on our preventive plan and we'll try and get this all stabilized and they'll be yeah great you know sign me up but what you need to do is you need to make it clear that it, it's, it doesn't apply retrospectively in other words it doesn't cover treatment that needed doing when they joined so it's not going to pay for their root treatments and it's not going to pay for their fillings they are on the hook for those you'll give them a quote for the work necessary to bring their mouth up to the sort of standards where you would consider accepting them onto your preventive scheme because it's remember it's a preventive scheme it's not about treatment it's not about spreading out the cost of your dental treatment which a lot of dentists and patients assume it is it's not about um, it's not a payment plan it's not an installment plan and occasionally you you can explain all this to the patients and then they will you know they will still go away with the impression oh this is great you know I've got a quote for 700 quid here but this dentist said he's found an insurance plan that he can put me on that will pay for fillings and crowns and uh, not well, you know fillings and root treatments and extractions and hygienist treatment and everything and you know they'll sort of feign they'll be mock shocked when you tell them no actually it's quite clear and we we now in our quotation we do put we, we do in our quotation we say I am pleased to say um, you would be eligible to join our preventive plan it would be X pound a month um, however this is designed to uh, prevent problems in future and does not and therefore cannot be backdated to cover the treatment shown above and this is now in the quote so um, that's cut down a bit on this sort of this mock shock that they can't get <laughs> I mean you know, I don't know what they think. I mean, it's obviously too good to be true. It would be nice if your house burnt down and you could then get fire insurance. Or if your car, you know, you could just go around and crash your car and then get motor insurance post facto. But uh, it doesn't work like that. Um, we have, we, we are on the lower, the insurance that comes with it, we are on the lower rate, which I find quite adequate. The, You'll find that they sell these companies sell implant insurance and stuff like that, which again the patients and a lot of dentists, I'm sure, interpret as meaning that it expands the coverage of the plan to include implants, but it doesn't. I think it just in, it covers the third-party insurance element to cover damage to implants uh, from external trauma. So how are we doing? <clears throat> yeah, so it's not an instalment plan. The the finally basically what I would say is that if you join Denplan then Denplan will want to do it all for you and it's a bit like it's a bit like almost the difference between sort of Apple and and Windows uh, PCs in that if you're if you can't if you if you have trouble working a toaster then you'd be better off on Denplan because Denplan does do everything for you they they market and brand everything they um, you know they'll give you the leaflets and the forms and the practice information leaflets and to a certain extent you know you do get a bit of a there's a network effect from that because but only really if a patient moves from dentist to dentist you could say to a patient who's thinking of joining look you know if you join Denplan and then you move to another area then we can easily find who the nearest Denplan dentists are and from a patient's point of view I think a Denplan dentist or a dentist with a practice plan is is a better dentist. I honestly believe that because I think that they are probably more committed to prevention. They'll be more likely to be compliant with um, all the admin and paperwork and know about the rules and the regs and everything and and they'll just be all round more committed to doing good dentistry, you know. Um, but 
you, but understand this, right? You'll only ever be successful as a third-party capitation dentist if you understand all this. You have to inwardly get it in and digest it and be able to explain it to the patients in words of one syllable because if you don't understand it you will sure as eggs are eggs never be able to explain it to anyone and if you don't understand it the patient won't and if they don't understand it they won't join it so your whether or not you have a lot of patients on capitation will depend entirely on your ability to talk to them in the practice answer their questions without hesitation about why you think that them going on a monthly payment plan, a preventive dental scheme, will be better for their oral health because they'll be able to, you'll, you'll be able to do more for them. And to, to give you a quick example, supposing a patient comes in and they have a checkup and you know their oral hygiene is pretty poor so you show them, you just close them up and you um, uh, give them a toothbrush, pack them off with a goodie bag, with a space brush and a dental mirror and your business card and some disclosing tablets and everything. And then um, you say, well, I'd like to see you again in about a month, if that's all right. Can you come back and see me in a month and we'll do the same thing again and we'll just check everything's fine, you know, that you're improving and that your plaque's under control and everything. Now, if they're on the dental plan and it's free, they will say yes. If, they, if you're charging £49 for a visit, they, they won't exactly say no, but what they'll say is, um, mm, is it okay if we, we don't do that? You know, is it okay if we sort of leave that till the next checkup? Um, and then and try seeing them three or four times and that's it, forget it. You know, no one is gonna spend £200 to be told how to brush their teeth four times. Whereas on the dental plan, they love it, they'll come in 10 times if, if you ask them to. And that is why gum disease gets solved on a third party capitation plan and it does not get solved on the pay as you go or the National Health Service. Okay, that's about everything I can tell you about capitation, but if you, if you need to know anything else, just get in touch. Have a nice day, see you tomorrow.